Hello, welcome back to my workshop. Just recording in a different part of the building. I've got lots of printers going, it's really noisy. So I thought I would just record this part where it's nice and quiet. So what we're looking at in this video is an Atari 2600 light switcher. It's brought from eBay, had a fault of missing color. So in the video, we will look at fixing that fault. We give the Atari a really good clean, Although I don't really show the cleaning, I recommend that you look at the video by Mark and Neil over on RMC where they go through all the steps. That's what I did to get this looking nice and clean. After we get the colour working, I then do an S-Video mod to get it working with this 1084S monitor. The picture looks absolutely amazing. It was a little bit tricky and I had a few problems that we will go over. It all works as you can see. So let's have a quick look at the parts that I brought before we get onto the repair. So this is what I brought, it's uh, the light sixer and you can tell the light sixer is because of the way that the switches have a surround and also the thickness of the bezels around the side and the front. came with this joystick and two games, Space Invaders and Pac-Man. Pac-Man doesn't work, but Space Invaders does. And like I say, it was brought with the fault that it was black and white only. So I guess the first thing is to look at some of the pictures from the initial purchase. I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison and also go through the fault finding that I did to fix the color mods. So as you can see, I was very impatient and it's in pieces and we haven't really looked at taking it apart or anything. As soon as I got it, I was just more interested in trying to fix it than making a video. So I spent a couple of days messing about and luckily I can kind of show you what I did. Um, I can reproduce the initial fault and the tricks that I used to, to test various things. So one of the common things that happens is the switches go. So all the switches have been uh, cleaned and deoxit runs through them. And all the switches are working fine. Another problem that this particular one had was the connector that connects the top and the bottom boards together. So I replaced that, all the wires and the connector with a new one. Anything that moved on that connector, it would reset and things would happen. So that was the first thing that I did as far as changing parts go. So that was my first step to replacing parts. And that made it a lot better. I, it wouldn't twitch off and it wouldn't do things when it was touching. So at this point, I was happy that the switches were okay. So let's just switch it on. And we're still using the RF antenna. Thankfully this LG TV has got every input that you can imagine. So I've got chopper command in and this is what we got. It was a black and white picture. So the first thing that people say is to check the switch. But what I noticed was when you flick the switch, you can actually see a slight change in the picture. So you can see there that there is a very slight change. So that made me think that the switch was actually working okay. Um, the next thing to check is the color adjustment and as I was uh, tweaking it I could get stuff on the screen which went away when I set it to black and white so that was another indication that the switch was working the last thing to check with the switch is to actually read the pin that the switch connects to so I've got one end connected to ground and um, this chip here, which handles all the inputs and outputs. So that first pin, so we've got five volt, and then when we flick the switch, we've got naught volts. So the switch is pulling the pin high and low, and that corresponds to the interference on the screen. So I started to read a few more things, and I actually found the service guide, and I was following through the list of things that could possibly go wrong. And I just eliminated them all. So I changed the RF modulator. 
I pulled the chips out of my Junior and replaced all three chips. Thankfully in this they're all in sockets. And then um, I tested the chips that I taken out of this in the Junior and they work perfectly. So the, these aren't actually the, the original chips, these are the chips from the Junior. The other ones were MOS chips and don't trust Moz chips. So I was happy that those three chips were good. And it was talking about um, checking for various signals and they were all on the colour line. So if we look at the schematic, which I will put on the screen, we can see that there is Luma 0, 1 and 2, sync and colour. And the colour follows a circuit. It goes through R212, C212, R214, R215, that then goes through the, the to, connects to the outputs of the CD4050, which I also changed. And that then goes out to the RF modulator. So rather than messing about, I replaced the cap next to the color adjustment. I replaced these two Zener diodes. I replaced R212 and also these two capacitors. And after replacing all of those, I came back to the same situation. And obviously it's because I'd been messing about with that wheel. Where, so now if we was to keep on adjusting, we can see that we actually get color. So, um, so yeah, after following the service guide and just shotgunning, I replaced all the components and that was it. The color was now working and all the other switches work. So I was really, really happy. So I managed to fix the fault that was highlighted on the auction of not having any color. I then made it a little bit better by replacing that dodgy connector and cleaning up all the switches. So now that I've got that back up and working, I wanted to do a few more tweaks and I've got uh, a kit to replace this capacitor because it's quite bulgy and soft and we're also going to replace this regulator. I've already replaced the other caps. After that, we're going to fit this S video mod. So this will do composite and S video. The picture on the RF out isn't actually too bad. Um, and it's working really, really well. So let's just get on with doing a few more bits of maintenance and replace this capacitor and the regulator with new ones before moving on to the S-Video mod. So in here we have a new capacitor, 25 volt, 2200 microfarad, 5 volt regulator and the chiclet capacitor which I've already replaced. So let's fire up the desolder station. Okay, so we want to Desolder those two legs. and negative is on that side. Yep, positive just there. And then we've got the regulator.
clean that up. The kit came with some new compound. Okay, that's the new capacitor and the new regulator. So let's try again. So let's just try turning it on. Um, no picture, no cartridge, that's okay. And we're back up and working. So that's good, new regulator, new capacitor. So the next thing is uh, the Super Video Mod. This is the board that I have. Originally it was designed by the Longhorn engineer and this is a Palan NTSC version. I got this from Silver Fox on eBay. It's been really helpful because the first one got lost. And uh, we've got the inputs on this side and the outputs on that side. So these need connecting up to the TIA on the board and two pins go on the top and some more go on the bottom. So the first thing that we need to do is get this chip out and we need to lift up two legs. So I've got the instructions and for the, the lifting of the legs we need to lift up pin 9 and pin 13. Pin 9 is the colour and pin 13 is audio. Uh, and then we need to connect those up to the relevant leads on here. So I'm just going to pop that back in. I was having some trouble with the way that I put the caps on, I should have laid them flat and it wasn't going in properly. So what I've done is um, I've just took, taken the, the corner off the shield so then that can go on and they can just pop out that corner and then I, I can put this back in and deal with the cables afterwards. I'm uh, just going to put some insulation tape on the corner. Uh, so I think we should just power this up, make sure that it still works before we screw anything back together. So we'll just check that we have indeed got 5 volt and ground on those wires. So 
So yes, I have the correct voltage. Right, so that is our composite signal. It's not bad, but it's not great. This TV is not the best anyway. That's not good. Have I broke it? Shit. <laughs> All right, it is the next day, and I did some thinking overnight, and I had too many things that I didn't know what was going on. One, I think the 1084S has some issues with bad solder joints on the back. Two, the TV that I was using at the start has a really bad picture on S video. Three, I didn't know what was coming out of this, and I was using cheap RCA connectors on the end. So, I decided to, to do some work off camera. I found a TV with a good picture. I changed the way that I was connecting this up and I've now gone to the recommended way of using RCA jacks on the back. I've used shielded cable inside and it's wired up to the S video mod. We can see here that I have my scope. So I used the scope to check that everything was working okay. So if we switch on, if we look at our composite, We have a signal, then we have audio, I'm not looking for anything on, there's no sound at the moment. Then we have Luma, and then the last one is Chroma. And we have a signal, so the S-Video mod is now working. My initial fault with the sound was because of something on this board, like a bad solder joint. I reflowed all of the solder on all of it and made sure that this wire mod was on correctly. As soon as I did that, the problem with the sound went away. No more corrupt garbage when we have sound. So let's get this scope out of the way and let's go back to a TV. So this is a TV that I found that has S video and composite. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a stand, so we've got some glare on the screen. There we go. So that's enough to do. So I've got uh, I've got leads for both composite and S video. So let's do composite first. So we can see that we have a picture. And we have sound with no distortion on the screen. So let's zoom in to the screen, look at the picture quality. I don't have a way to capture this, unfortunately. So it looks okay. We've got still got a little bit of like shadowing around the characters, and we have the the lines. Is is that like crawl going across the back? But it doesn't look too bad really. Let's just zoom out and turn this off. Disconnect that one. We'll connect up our S video. And on this TV it comes in on the same channel. Okay. So now let's have a look at this picture. So it's a lot crisper, there's 
although you can't see it because of the camera, the dot crawl in the back is nowhere near as bad as it was before and the shadows around the colours also look a lot better. This joystick doesn't work very well. Everything is now working. We've got composite and audio, S video and audio, and uh, a TV that, that's showing the picture as best as it can. So I'll deal with the 1084S later. For the moment, let's get all this put back together, neat and tidy, so that I can show off all the work. All right, there we go. So I've just put that back together. We've got the S video card in, the S video mod, the cables are all glued down in place so nothing can move around. We've got our new connector across the top that we replaced. So now let's look at another, another part that I did for the restoration. So these are the covers that were in there for the switches. And I cut some new ones with my cheapo laser. Just out of some uh, foam that I brought from Hobbycraft. So that should help make it look better. And then we have the cover and I have scrubbed the cover uh, all the way around inside and out. We did the paint around the trim and that was thanks to the video from Neil at RMC and Mark from Mark Fixer Stuff where they cleaned up one of these. So I use all their tips. I recommend you watch that video if you want to see about cleaning all this up. So there we have our restored, cleaned up and modded Tori 2600. So another thing that I have is an UNO cart. So you can use an SD with your 2600. Uh, so this is on S video. I've adjusted the colors and the text looks really nice. So there we have the cathode. I did the sockets on the back of the monitor and it's all working now. And the picture on this looks amazing. So I've achieved my goal and I've got the 2600 working on S video on the 1084S and the picture looks really, really nice. We can see that it was a bit of a struggle. I managed to fix the problems with the S video mod. I did a reflow, I spoke to the guy that made the mod and he was very helpful. So we got that working, so it was really worth it. The picture on this 1084S is just so clean. It's absolutely amazing. And the Atari looks almost like new. There's a couple of minor scratches here and there. But overall, I think it looks really amazing. And I've been enjoying playing it. I've got the, I have the Uno card, so I've got everything that you could pretty much want on there. Also, some paddles came in, which need a bit of a clean up, but they're working as well. Kaboom! It's a great game. I really enjoy playing that. One other thing that I found recently is power switches for the 1084S. So I've got a few things that I'm looking at, be some 3D printing 
and a switch, but it will be a no modification to the actual monitor itself. So again, thank you for watching my channel. I'll see you all soon.